This is the greatest sport in the world. <clears throat> it's also one of the greatest things in the world. <laughs> and it's results like this that demonstrate why. <clears throat> New Zealand are still in it. They're still alive. A 0-0 draw on the first leg in Wellington sees New Zealand with a fighting chance in this World Cup playoff. And an Oceanian representative against a team from South America. There's still 90 minutes left to play, at least. I couldn't watch this match because I don't have BN Sport. Um, try to watch live match commentaries and highlights. This was a valiant, hard-fought effort from the All Whites. And they damn near stole it. They damn near... Ryan Thomas, in the 85th minute, blasting a volley, inches wide of the Peruvian uh, le um, left-hand post. That's just... <laughs> well, it was almost disaster for New Zealand in the first six minutes. Uh, they almost scored a really ugly own goal. Uh, goalkeeper Stefan Marinovic of New Zealand making an incredible <laughs> diving save. The ball was rolling past him. He was running after it, had to dive and like sort of get, do a U-turn with his right arm and just like scoop it out to prevent it from crossing the line. Go go watch the highlights of that. You'll see it's, it happened in the, the sixth or, or seventh minute. Uh, New Zealand almost scored a ridiculous own goal. Uh, really embarrassing. Look, as expected, Peru was the better team. Peru dominated this match. But New Zealand, as they grew into the game and in the second half, they really f did a great job of flustering Peru. And Paulo Guerrero's presence was really felt today. I was not, well, last night. I really was not expecting that because Peru... You know, they have other playmakers like Edson Flores, Christian Cueva, Farfan. I know he's getting up there in age, but still, this is a team that just vastly outranks New Zealand. And I thought that even with Paulo Guerrero's absence, it wouldn't play that big of a role. If anything, it would galvanize Peru. It, 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 would, it would inspire them to uh, play without their captain. But that wasn't the case. He, his absence was greatly felt. New Zealand, Chris Wood was injured. He didn't come on till the last 15, 20 minutes of the game, but what a difference he made once he came on. I mean, arguably for the last 15, 20 minutes, New Zealand was creating most of the chances. And uh, Chris Wood had a couple of one-two touches, an excellent free kick that had to be retaken. I thought him, Bill Toloma, Costa Barbarousis, and Ryan Thomas really shined up front in this match. And in the back, Winston Reed really put in one of his best performances ever. So I thought New Zealand overachieved. And what I think happened here was um, I don't think Peru was overconfident. I just think that they weren't expecting something like this because they're so used to playing teams in South America, including teams that are better than them, that New Zealand's sort of unorthodox approach to this match prevented something of an unknown variety for them. And at times, New Zealand's sloppiness and physicality really uh, caught Peru off guard. And that's what I think happened. I just think Peru, it was like a it was a shock for Peru. It was like a culture shock. Um, Peru is not usually used to dominating possession uh, in games and qualifying as they did in this match. They had like what, like almost seventy percent possession. In this, that's I mean that's wild. So, I mean, 
at the end of the day, you could blame Peru, but I think a lot of credit goes to New Zealand here for holding them off. I mean, that's particularly impressive. And uh, look, we could be heading into the second leg in Lima with New Zealand leading on aggregate 1-0. They came really close to uh, uh, grabbing it in the end. But Ryan Thomas, just um, his his shot fired just a, a few inches wide. But, I mean, Peru, a lot of golden opportunities as well. I thought Rui Diaz could have been a lot better, to be honest. Um, but I think the key for New Zealand for the second leg in Lima is <sighs> set pieces. Because there is a very distinct... Um, advantage in, in the as far as like in the aerial position for New Zealand because on average they're a lot taller than the Peruvian players are. They could probably outmuscle them physically. So I think maybe set pieces, maybe Chris Wood getting on the end of a long cross or free kick. But I just don't see how New Zealand still I don't see how New Zealand comes survives that leg in Lima unless Chris Wood plays the full ninety minutes. He doesn't play the full 90 minutes. I, just, I don't see what, what any chance they really have. Um, so hopefully for his case, he'll be more fit by then. But New Zealand, I mean, hats off. That, that's that's really, it's a, it's a great achievement. That they, they lose in Lima next week as I expect them to lose, as I, as I expect them to do. They will at least go out while showing that they are not easy pickings. You know, they at least give them a fight. It's good for them. It's good for Oceania. Now, for Peru, Peru has to beat New Zealand because it's not just for them. It's for Kamibol. They have to show Kamibol, show Kamibol's worth, get as many spots as possible in the World Cup. But I'm glad that New Zealand uh, made things more interesting, at least. Because, guys, 0 0, right? New Zealand goes to that second leg. They could just need one goal. It's possible that they, they could only just need one goal, and they, they sneak through on uh, the away goals rule. I don't think that's going to happen. I, I, I still think Peru will win. I think Peru will. I think New Zealand's strategy is most likely unsustainable for 180 minutes, particularly if it goes to extra time, if the second leg ends 0 0 after 90 minutes as well. You got extra time and then penalties. Uh, it's just it just seems too much. I don't know if New Zealand can hold Peru off for 120 minutes. But if they snag a goal, okay. Um, imagine this. Imagine this. Imagine this. What if what if New Zealand gets an early goal? They bunker down, batten down the hatches, <laughs> do their best, and just pray to God. And then the pressure is on Peru because not only does Peru have to score on back to get into the match, they have to score two. They have to score two because the thing about zero zero draws is when you go away, every every goal you score on the road in a second leg, it basically counts as two goals. So I mean, anything can happen. Anything can happen. I still expect Peru will defeat New Zealand. I think they will. Not even do it narrowly. I think they're going to win next week by at least two goals. At least two goals. I think Peru will win by next week. But um, they've at least been shown that nothing here is a guarantee. Nothing. Nothing is a guarantee. Um, I think a lot of the players already knew that before they went to New Zealand. Like I said, a lot of people said Peru was overconfident. I don't think so. I, I, I'm defending Peru here. I don't think they were overconfident. I just think they're just not used to it. They're not used to playing teams like New Zealand, you know. Um, so yeah, but yeah, I, hey, if New Zealand could pull it off again, that that would just be remarkable. It really would be remarkable. Um, but that's my reaction. This makes it the second leg a lot more interesting because you know New Zealand's not out of it yet, and Peru. At least they get the chance to do it in front of their home fans. So thank you guys for watching. I'll see you in my next video. Till then, much love. Have a good day and peace.